Hi, this video is going to take a look at the ACT math topic of proportions. So we're going to go over the definition of proportion and how to solve for unknowns within a proportion. And then I've got five practice problems from the ACT that have to do with proportions that we're going to solve and explain. Let's take a look. Okay, so what is a proportion? A proportion is just two ratios or fractions uh, that are equal to each other. So 3 fifths equals 9 over 15. That's a proportion. Two fractions are equal. You can see that the fraction on the right is just 3 times on the numerator and 3 times on the denominator. So what's an example of a proportion? Well, if we have a length of chain, we've got this big heavy chain, um, it's going to be proportional to its weight. So if we had 3 feet of the chain, it might weigh 11 pounds. So if we had 6 feet of the chain, then it would weigh 22 pounds. And if you see that proportion, 3 over 11 equals 6 over 22. So now solving proportion, we can notice that in back in that proportion, 3 fifths equals 9 over 15, the two diagonals are going to multiply to the same thing when you've got a proportion. So the 3 times the 15 and the 5 times the 9 are both going to equal 45. We're essentially putting it over a common denominator, and that's why this works. So the 3 times the 15 and the 9 times the 5, the two diagonals are always going to be equal when two fractions are set equal to each other. So we can use that to solve for an unknown. So if we've got 6 over 15 equals x over 10, we can cross multiply the 6 times the 10 and the 15 times the x and set them equal to each other. So 60 is going to equal 15x. Divide both sides by 15 to solve for x and we get x equals 4. Now when we're looking at word problems, uh, it helps to use labels so that we know that we get the right thing in the numerator and the right thing in the denominator. So in this simple example here, we've got three pounds of chocolate that costs $18. How much would it cost for seven pounds? So I'm going to go ahead and put the pounds in the numerator and the cost in the denominator. Now it doesn't matter which way you do it, uh, but it does matter that you're consistent. So I like to write the labels right out, pounds and cost, so that when I set up my proportion, I know to put three in the numerator because that's where I'm putting pounds, and 18 is my cost, so that goes in the denominator. And that's set equal to seven in the numerator because that's how many pounds, and we don't know the cost. So that's where our, our cost is going to go in the denominator. So it really helps to write out um, what are you going to put in the numerator in the denominator so that you don't um, confuse them and you can keep them consistent. Then from there we can just cross multiply. 3 times x equals 18 times 7. So we get 3x equals 126. Divide by 3 to get our final answer and that's going to be 42. Okay, let's take a look at these five sample problems having to do with proportions. All right, in the first problem, Marcus has a favorite castle recipe. Three eggs make six servings. He's going to modify the recipe by using five eggs. How many servings will that get? So when we set up our proportion, I'm going to put eggs on the top servings on the bottom. doesn't matter which way you do it, it just matters that you keep it consistent. So if you want to put servings over eggs, you get the same answer. I just write these out so that I make sure that the fraction I do on the left and the fraction I do on the right are consistent and that my proportion is set up the right way. So I've got three eggs. That's going to get me six servings. So five eggs is going to get me how many servings? And we can cross multiply. Three times x 3x equals 30. 6 times 5 is 30. Divide both sides by 3. x equals 10, or c for our answer. All right, on the next one, a salesperson has a commission that's directly proportional. So when you see directly proportional, that means that when we divide two numbers, uh, set it equal to those other those two numbers divided that that proportion is going to be equal. Um, if your sales are 800, 
sales are 800 your commission is 112 how much commission would you have if your sales were 1400 so let's set up commission and sales so if our commission is 112 when our sales is 800 what is our commission we don't know the commission when it's 1400 for sales now we can cross multiply 800 times x equals 112 times 1400 if you use a calculator for this 156,800 divide both sides by 800 and get x equals 196 choice b now a shortcut here um, if you wanted to do some reducing before you did the math we can reduce in this direction because this is just a fraction or in this direction but when we have set up as a proportion with two fractions equal to each other we can also do this direction or this direction so we actually could have reduced the 800 and 1400 if we notice that 200 goes into both of those so we could have said 200 goes into both in this goes into 800 four times and we could go okay it goes into 1400 seven times and we could have reduced this to four and seven and then just did 112 times seven equals 4x just makes the math easier especially if these numbers are multiples of each other uh, sometimes it makes it a lot simple but it's, this is only in proportions when you have them equal to each other you can um, you can cancel along the sides along the top or along the bottom all right on the perimeter on, on a particular road map one half inch represents 18 miles about how many miles apart are two towns that are two and a half inches apart? So let's set up the proportion as we have a measurement on the map and then we have an actual. All right, so now we've got fractions in here. So we're gonna have fractions within fractions, but we do it the same exact way. So on the map, we have a half an inch and the actual that represents 18 miles. All right, and then you want to say this is equal to the two towns are two and a half inches apart. So again, on the map, it's two and a half. And we want to find out the actual. Um, if this is confusing, you could also set it up with decimals if you want. You can do 0.5 over 18 equals 2.5 over x. If a fraction within a fraction confuses you, this is another way to set it up. Um, either way, we're going to get one half x when we multiply this diagonal, one half times x, then 18 times two and a half. Going this way, that's going to get us 45. So to get rid of a half, we've got to multiply both sides by two. That cancels and we get X equals 45 times two or 90. Choice E. Another way you could do it too, when you're setting this up, one half over 18, if you wanna get the, rid of the fraction, if a half is 18, then one is gonna be 36. That's another way to do it. You could have got rid of the fraction by going one and 36 and then make the math a little easier that way as well. But either way, you're gonna get the answer as 90. All right, if the pole is indicative of how the 10,000 registered voters will actually vote, we want to find out how many would vote for a loo. But in the poll, there was 200 voters, 200 people poll, and Lou got 80. So we could set this up, Lou and total. So Lou got 80 out of a total of 200. That's the first part of our proportion. And we're gonna set that equal to how many is Lou gonna get out of 10,000? Then we can just cross multiply. If you wanted to cancel, you could. You could cancel 
200 into 10,000 uh, to make the math easier. Or if we just cross multiply 200x equals 800,000 divide by 200 on both sides and you get x equals 4,000. Now this problem could also be done with um, percents, uh, but just remember a percent is just a very specific proportion. So if we set this up as a percent, we're doing the proportions as well. We just we do it out of 100. A percent is just a proportion when you have one of them out of 100. That's the only difference. And for the last problem, um, Hector had a 13 inch screen and he moved to a 19 inch screen. If a boxcar appeared eight inches on the 13 inch screen, how much would it appear on the 19 inch screen? And again, just set up a proportion. So we set up the screen, the actual size to what what it appeared. We would set up the ratio of on a 13 inch screen, it appeared to be eight. So on a 19 inch screen, what will it appear to be? And then just cross multiply. 13 X equals 19 times eight, which is 152. Divide both sides by 13 and you get X equals 11.69 something to the nearest whole number, round it to 12, and get G as our answer. Thanks for watching. If you have an ACT test coming up, good luck with it. Um, if you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, you can do so right over here. I've got other suggestions of videos for you to watch right here. Uh, please comment below on things that you liked about the videos or ways that I can improve it. And thanks for watching and come back again soon.